So really this presentation is about brewing your ideas and sharing your ideas. So if you don't take anything away from this presentation uh, other than this is really three things. Get out of your house, get out into an informal environment, it could be a pub, it could be a brewery, I recommend brewery, Thomas Creek of course, and uh, connect with your friends. Number two is doodle, sketch, draw and practice that and share those drawings. And three, build a community around your ideas and help others share their ideas as well. So that is the three things. That's all I have to say tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. So where do you get your most innovative ideas? Shower. Shower. Driving. Other people, oh, great. Over a cigar, awesome. I was hoping nobody would say uh, the bathroom. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have to call it um, toilet and tissue. <clears throat> so um, there, was a there was a study in Britain. Uh, it was an IT firm who did this, over 2,000 employees. 47% said the best ideas that they, they got or released was in a pub or restaurant. 29% was in the office boardroom and about 19% was, ni uh, was online. So you can see there is a, a kind of underlying current that a level of informality is important for gaining ideas. So uh, this uh, was written by, sorry I'm getting a little happy with the presentation thing here. Um, this was written by a gentleman, uh, he was an urban planning gentleman. The, uh, he came up with the, thir uh, the uh, term third place. I, I never heard that before. So the third place is really not your home, not your work, but a, a different place that you can connect with people. I heard somebody say connect with people. So that is the third place. And what he said was that it's really like a living room for society. You really connect with individuals, it could be mundane, it could be complex conversations, but it's outside in a different area and connecting with people. So really, when, when I came across this, it really resonated, that, that thing, that, that collective conscious of where informality really takes place. Anybody recognize those guys? Yes, Lewis. In J.R.R. Tolkien. So they had this group called the Inklings, and in Oxford, they met at this pub called the Eagle and the Child. And what they did was they shared their manuscripts of what they written. And um, what they did was they, they, they shared it and shared their ideas. And I would just love to have been back in those days with the oaky, dark, having that stout, and talking about those ideas. Probably they probably would have not ne they never had released the quality of work unless they met in a place like this. Again, at the Eagle Child. That's on my bucket list to go there, by the way. So, ideas in this informal environment. There's been so many different uh, uh, businesses after I've looked at there that really uh, started in this informal environment. So, uh, one of the most famous is Southwest Airlines where the gentleman who started that as part of this uh, in, a, in, a, in a lounge drafted out the route for Southwest Airlines and um, that comes to become Southwest Airlines after that. Shark Week, the executive of Shark, uh, Shark Week stated their, the whole Shark Week concept was started in a bar, in a brainstorm session with, I'm just going to put that down. <laughs> So, <laughs> but uh, Shark Week was started in uh, a, a pub as well. So Shark Week, they brainstormed, they read it on the back of a napkin. Uh, Warby Parker, uh, four uh, Wharton students, uh, was drinking a yingling in a Philly pub. That's how they started this disruptive eyewear company. Uber, these guys party into the middle of the night to come up with Uber. So they listen to music. 
And uh, I just wanted to throw in, uh, I think one of the most significant things since it's been in the media that it's a historical site now is the Stonewall Inn and the LGBT community really started in an informal environment. That's where it really started and really took off because they built community around that. So as you can see, there is plenty examples and I could give you so many examples where ideas form or brood in these informal environments. So uh, I do want to highlight how I started Beer and Napkins and um, just some of the key individuals that really I really respect and really kind of nurtured me is my brother. He was an entrepreneur and that's where I first got the concept of that. We were sitting at a bar and we got this idea, Beer and Napkins, you know, the best ideas become, become that. <laughs> this thing has got a life of its own. Um, but that's where we started, and, and, and it's kinda, it kind of stuck with us over a period of time. And then another gentleman, Tony Miller, he was an engineer who really kind of encouraged me and really told me, you know, you really need to take this idea to the next level and create a little business and organization out of that. And then finally, Paul Hebert, he's a social media a guru and he really gave me a lot of perspective about building online communities and building communities in general. And this is just a little one of our first napkins on beer napkins. It looks kind of cluttered but it really kind of laid out a lot of the, the concepts there. So what I wanted to show you this is that building people who are connected and really help you along the way is important. And, and many times I just want to kind of give up and not get together and do this anymore. But these individuals really helped me out. And I think Veronica is here too. Hey, Veronica. She's in that picture too. It's, it's, this is a part of our Beer and Napkins board. I really have a board together. And Pam Wood Brown, she's at the code for Greenville tonight. She is one of the, uh, a really great community builder too. And she has helped with that and Tony and, and Evan and so forth. So <clears throat> build your tribe and uh, your ideas would go farther. So, uh, Bill did an eloquent job of sharing about the craft beer and how it came about. As my organization was created, I learned a hell of a lot through the craft beer industry. So um, the craft beer industry really, uh, it, I connected with that third place uh, that I just mentioned there, going to there. So as, I, as the craft beer industry in Greenville grew in the last few years, I really observed the level of collaboration with uh, different breweries. It's not a very comp it's, it's not a competitive in its truest sense, but they really uh, work together. And I really said, "Wow, that's that's a spirit I really really connect with." They're very passionate about what they do and the level of quality that they have, and they're really community builders. They really, it's just an absolutely great spirit to be around. And they're socially responsible. A lot of environmentally conscious. They had to use water, for goodness sakes, in their products. So they're very connected to the environment. They work hard but have fun. All those are the things and things I've really drawn out in the craft beer industry. So I really, really respect Bill and the craft beer industry here because I've learned it in my own group how they connect. So. <laughs> What, is, what beer napkins? I mean, everybody, my wife, always her friends ask me, what the hell is beer napkins? Does he just drink all the time? No, it, it really is a metaphor for informality. That's the way I look at beer. And it could be a coffee shop, it could be anything, but the beer side of it is the informality side of it, the third space. The napkins is visual thinking. I'll talk a little bit about what visual thinking is. But combine those two powerful tools of informality and the creative spirit and then the visual thinking aspect of that, you get a hell of a lot of good ideas. So that's what we really uh, look at. So what is visual thinking? This is uh, a drawing by uh, a really great visual thinker online. You can look him up, David W. Gray. He started X-Plane. And he's the really the, one of the, the top leaders in that visual thinking uh, landscape there. Um, there's some other ones, uh, Sonny Brown, who really focuses on the doodle revolution. I don't know if any of you guys seen that. There's a TED talk on that about the power of doodling. But um, there's a lot of things. But visual thinking is really taking the complex ideas and making it uh, very simple to, uh, to look at. Everything's in your head, 
So you need to take that out and put it on paper. So really I want to demonstrate a couple of things here. So what I advocate is really three tools as a basic tool for visual thinking. First of all, I like to, anybody seen this? This is called mind mapping. What you do is take a central idea and you break it out into components there. So it, this is a great way to um, look at a, a problem, a, a strategy, and any problem just to break it out into more visual things. A lot of times we make lists. I, if I knew about uh, mind mapping years ago, I'll probably do better in school for one thing. Is really, it really takes your ideas into um, more. So you break the central idea and you look at those things in, in the components. So it could be, uh, I need to do a grocery list this week. I need to uh, plan a business. I need to do other things here. Just break it out into a more graphic central idea to spread out. That's one component. Sex, uh, next is doodling. Now everybody says, well I can't doodle, I can't draw, I can't do any things. It's really about simple shapes. So I use squares, I use circles, I use triangles, and I, I, I draw that way. So, and that's the way I can put my ideas on the paper. And I can put a little Thomas Creek beer in here, and he can drink it up. But really you can make little hands and things like that. That, that is very simple. So look at, look at very simple, put your ideas on paper, and um, go from there. The next thing is storyboarding. So storyboarding is breaking down a process or something you want to happen. It could be a community uh, organization. It could be anything. But like building a house, you have to have the frame. You have to put the windows and then You just lay out the whole problem in a kind of a chronological area. So that, that way you can really see this visually. So when you're at the bar, right, you can do a mind map, you can do a doodle, or you can do a storyboard. So these are just some simple tools. There's all kind of other tools, but these are the, these are the key, key things that I'd use and I just jotted those down, just mind maps or, or storyboards and whatnot. So uh, that's a, just a, a way to use those visual thinking tools. Now, I'm going to show a few extra slides here of what some of the beer and napkins events that we've had. You may recognize this gentleman here, Ben Riddle. He's been around Greenville a good bit with Furman. This was uh, the Swamp Rabbit Trail. What we did was uh, bring in uh, one of the events. We brought in uh, some folks from the Greenville Recreation Department, and um, we uh, we shared the challenge for them. So we had we broke up the group, and uh, we started doing uh, brainstorming on how we can solve those problems. And we used a lot of the tools that I just mentioned there: sticky notes, other things. As you can see, Ben has writ written a lot of uh, complex drawings there, so he's really good at it. But uh, it's just a, a good way to engage an audience. Um, we have a lot of networking events in Greenville. Um, uh, what we want to do as a beer and napkins is to engage the crowd actively networking into solving some problems and having fun doing it. Uh, one, again, this was the Greenville County. Uh, this one was really exciting. Um, this was an event where we wanted to spotlight women entrepreneurs. And this was one, one was really well received. We had uh, three entrepreneurs that talked about their story of how they got started. And at the end of the event, they brainstormed how, how can we really uh, improve women in leadership and on boards and then really getting some resources for them. One was really fun. I really enjoyed, uh, we call it a mixer, like a fraternity mixer with cake and whiskey. Anybody know that group, cake and whiskey? So it was beer and napkins and the women's group cake and whiskey. So we had whiskey tasting and craft beer. So what better than that, right? So we had a great time there. 
Uh, this one was a really stretch for us. We worked with the uh, Malden City and it was a stretch for us and we um, really focused on using that informality and in, um, and doing the same thing with the the uh, the visual literacy, visual thinking process, and we got a lot of great ideas for the Malden City Council. It really was a great way to engage the citizens, and of course, craft beer was always part of that. And uh, finally, is a, a really a exciting uh, communities of growth uh, t uh, initiative that we're doing is a mesh. And we, what we really are excited about is really communicating the need for understanding of emerging technologies. Uh, we've got several individuals uh, from the biotech industry, advanced manufacturing, and also sustainability. And what we want to do is really share a lot of the emerging technologies that we haven't really been exposed to. A lot of folks is not, not really exposed to what biotech, and biotech is really going in South Carolina and the upstate. So this is one of the events that's really we're pushing out of beer and napkin to its own. So there's been a lot of events that have really focused on uh, bringing the economics of Greenville here. So I'm gonna leave you with this. There's three things that, again, I want to share with you. Get out of your comfort zone in your house. Get out and connect at a brewery and a pub. Learn to sketch and doodle your ideas out. Keep practicing, and, but share it with other people. And build a community around your idea. It's really worked for us, and really we really respect the, the craft brewer, brewery uh, uh, industry here because they've been very ha uh, really connected with us. So we really thank you guys. And enjoy uh, a Thomas Creek beer, so cheers. Thank you.